three-man quality that those two guys bring to this picture because it doesn't work without that. Yeah, you need I, I, it needs to be blue collar. Yeah, yeah. Piper and Keith David were perfect. Oh man! Because you absolutely believe that they were dudes on the end of their rope, willing to work at a construction site for for cash. I, I couldn't believe anybody at this point, man. So I, I, here's what we got to do: we got to go out of left field. Okay. And cat, like I'm not saying Paul Giamatti, okay. but I'm saying like a character who's as unassuming as that. So you don't have a hulking dude anymore. You don't have. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Jab City Keith David. Right. You, you have other characters who aren't as um, big or high level. Are there some some actors hmm. like that? You know, the thing about it is, if it's Hollywood today, they're going to throw in Colin Farrell as Roddy Piper. Or what about something like what that. about John Leguizamo? Could he pull off every day? You know what? Leguizamo would be good as Keith David. He'd be perfect. Leguizamo would work as Keith David. You know, he does a Leguizamo ton of boxing training, too, right? He boxes a lot, he, so he'd be good in the fight he's from He's from New York. There's no way that man doesn't know how to use his hands properly. Yeah, he's, I'm he's, saying. He could throw combos. <coughs> oh, sorry, sneezing. <coughs> well, what Poison about Brendan Fraser? Ooh, Fraser's a big guy. He's big. He would work as Piper. I, and honestly, I think that uh, Fraser is underrated as an actor. Yeah, oh, I do too. I liked him. I didn't like that trust show, but I just watched it because he was in it. So, all right. So I, we, I want to see. Oh, dude. So I don't know how we did it, but these are two of my favorite actors because I love the Mummy. I have a huge soft spot for the Mummy. And we actually original, did. Oh, the, no, the, yeah, the, the 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 Brendan Fraser. Um, and we also did. Fraser. We did an Encino Man podcast. Yeah, you should listen to. <laughs> uh, we said I that. Did like that. Yeah. So we said that Stony. Uh, pe- so I like did an entire backstory for Stony and Encino Man. So you should listen to that podcast. But so we'd have a I fight do. between Brendan Fraser and John Leguizamo. Uh, dude, that is that that's MGM Grand. That's Madison Square Garden. And you could work I, that because he Leguizamo could move. Yeah. Right. And he's small. Yeah. And he's small. And and, and Jiu Jitsu would play more of a Jiu Jitsu would play more of a deal now. Listen, Fraser. Okay, Fraser is doing. Andre the Giant type moves. He's grabbing Leguizamo by the neck. He's throwing him up against the wall. Nothing is safe. Everything is on the table. I think it would go down well. Yeah. Man, we that just made this movie. That would work. And for what it's worth, I saw your uh, remakes article on RottenTomatoes.com, oh, yeah, yeah. everybody. Check out Hawkmeyer on RottenTomatoes.com, by the way. Excellent writer. And I will say this. Remake that was good, Fright Night. Oh, yeah. Dude, you love the Fright Night remake? Fright Night remake was spectacular to me. So good. The Colin cast, Farrell, dude. Yes. Colin Farrell, perfect. The guy that played uh, Evil Ed. Oh, perfect. yeah. Anton Yelich. And I, good. I think Imogen Poots, the actress in that. Uh, she was great. Uh, she, she, she is very good, man. She's awesome in Green Room. Uh, she was I know this yes. sounds like my wife. Oh, Green Room so dark. Love it. My wife's like a big fan of Poots because – you could put Poots in a scene with a stapler, and the stapler would have chemistry. That's right. Yeah. She was great. She was great in that movie. And R.I.P. to Yelchin, that yep. was too bad. But, man, I love that Fright Night movie. David Tennant. I, I, I'm at the, I literally would rather watch the remake than the original. And I still watch them back-to-back, to be honest with you. That's how I watch Fright Night. They're, it's a good remake. It is a good is. remake. It is. I watch Fright Night original. And then I watched the remake, and then I watch Fright Night 2, just because that woman in Fright Night 2, her eyes are spectacular. Oh, yeah. Who is that actress? I, I forget her name right now, but her eyes is, welcome to Fright Night. It's just a, <sighs> because when, I was a little kid. Oh, oh and, when, and when 2 came out? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, and she's hot. And then speaking of random, but one of one of my articles that kind of brought us talking again, because we always, we always had on, on Facebook and stuff, but that article yes, in 2015, yeah. uh, I wrote for AV Club. You're like, wait a second, that's you. I was, you were reading an article, and then you saw my name in it. That's right. And that's then you right. messaged me. I'm like, oh, Norbert. <laughs> yeah, man. You're a champion, brother. Dude, Fright You're a Night, champion. Fright Night, dude. Remake. Well, let me tell you. Here are a couple. Here, let me let me tell you something about this. this uh, oh, my brain just froze. Oh, wait. Wait, can I – do you want me to drop a drop something on you while your brain's frozen? Do something. Drop it. Someone said to me the other day that 
All right, so Scorsese should have won his Oscar sooner, right? Yeah, Taxi, all those course. movies. But yeah. if you've read the, the remake article, it's very hard to make a remake, remake that is better than the original, and that's what Scorsese did. And yeah, the departed. Right? Very few people have made and Infernal Affairs. I love. It's in the eighties. I mean, it's a very yeah. high rated remake or a yeah. film. So he yeah. made a remake that was better of a movie that was already in the eighties on Tomato Meter score. So that's right. The fact that he's one of the few people to ever pull that off warrants an Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I could make and, a case. Uh, I could annoy like uh, you know Matt Damon and Goodwill Hunting at a bar. I could. I could have you like them apples on him in a Boston pub while drinking some Boston lager. Well, the, the, <laughs> nice, nice accent. Yeah. Well played. Plus one right there. Chowder. The, the, crea <laughs> the creator of Infernal Affairs, uh, from what I read, whether it was a Wikipedia or just online, he felt that it was okay. He liked his movie better, and he felt that they just took the three Infernal Affairs because it's a trilogy. He felt like they took the three movies and smashed them together. Oh, he did. Totally. So, But that works, that's, though. That's, the fact that he smashed three into one. Yeah, that movie's brilliant, man. I don't hate that movie. I watched it about a month ago. Oh, I rewatched it. Wahlberg in that movie, dude? Oh, my God. A Baldwin in that Baldwin's freak out? Nicholson? Yo, when Baldwin just punches that guy in the face, I rewind <laughs> that Every time. Because, where did you put the camera? Where did you put the camera? Oh, man. <laughs> It's amazing, man. Yeah. It is absolutely amazing. So that was ah. that, that was my point about the the thing. What I wanted to say: What is the deal with Piper's facial awareness? Do you know how many times he just bumps into stuff and falls down? And he's such. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's been he's been. We're supposed to believe that this guy's been surviving on the streets since he was thirteen. Can't avoid boxes. He's very clumsy. He's just he's always falling down. He falls down in the church. He falls yeah. down in the supermarket. What's what's going on? He's crashing you know? everything. Seriously. And, and every time he – oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you Sorry. go. You go. You're on, you're on a good one. I was going to say, every time he pulls out a machine gun, watch that movie again. Oh, gosh. There's no aim. He's just spraying, dude. He's got GoldenEye Nintendo 64 aim lock on. It's amazing. He is one it's army amazing. A, 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 an AK. Not an he's AK. It's definitely not an AK, but he's one army in it and just <laughs> trucking people. But he – yeah. The security forces by the aliens aren't good. Because they're not used to that, these battles. Well, you know how it is, brother, man. You are a film aficionado yep. and a teacher at this point. So you know that Stormtrooper aim is just the default setting for movie villains. You know, I wrote you an article I mean? about uh, in Commando. It's on movies, films, and flicks where I counted nice. all the guns and how many bullets they could shoot per clip and when they were killed. And I figured out that, like... <laughs> 3,117 bullets missed Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando? Of course! Yeah, man. Stick around. Yeah. You know, it's, just, <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. Now, um, there, oh, go yeah. for it. I was going to say, when they're in the alley, and he's got the guy up on the, on the roof of the alley, he's just waving his arm around, <laughs> and he makes precision shots and kills this man. It is ridiculous. It's like, in this world, that's what you do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just one arm it. It's the kickback. Exactly. Uh, these bullets are lighter and there's less gravity. Or more gravity. Less gravity. But for what it's worth, the man's arm is the size of my head. So oh, yeah, you're I, right. I forgive him recoil. That was a big man. Yeah. So, R.I.P. Robbie Piper. I'm going to give us our, uh, our rating right here. But I love when he finds out about the aliens, right? And so he yes. starts calling people from male to hide face. Uh, he's like, <laughs> that's like pouring perfume on a pig. And he looks at one of them and he goes, "You like your head, you look like your head fell in the cheese dip back in 1957, real fucking ugly." But it's very the cheese dip. That's very Canadian, right? Like mm -hmm. the the poutine. It is. It uh, is. I mean, I'm not saying that's all the stereotypes combined, but just the way he said it. Uh, but I love he just starts swearing and murdering people, and then he calls someone the tooth fairy. No, I'm the tooth he fairy. Does. He does. And, and then there's the one part where uh, him and Keith David walk into the hotel and he suddenly ain't love grand. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why? What does love have to do with this, man? Then you have what the saddest story do? on the planet. All right. Let's so go. so we've 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 let's let's move to the end. What do you think? Let's let's get to the end where we have All this, right, brother. Talk he's, to me. he's he's one arm and machine gun and people. They get this yes. watch, which have portals, which we have learned. They open yes. up a portal and they 
jump through. That's and right. They appear in a massive tunnel that's bilingual. <laughs> which yeah, I think that's a beautiful touch, dude. They're in a, a bilingual language portal. The irony is uh, how these aliens have come to Earth to slaughter us all and use us as cattle, and yet are still kind enough to put the bathroom is this way in two different languages. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful like, thing. John Carpenter knew what he was doing. He did, sure. man. Be- that's how it gets down. That's how it gets down. And then it turns out that they have they got they got their act together, according to that guy, and they can travel right. everywhere, right, from mm-hmm. different places. So they're opening up portals, and. Mm-hmm. And then they just start killing people. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. more, de- but then what bums me out? We haven't talked about her, but it kind of bums me out that uh, Holly, played by Meg Foster, yeah. wipes out Keith yes. David. But it's kind of gangster how she does it. Just in the brain, no words, no hesitation, none. And did you see that none. coming? You know what it is. As a kid, I did not. As an adult, I get it. Because when I was watching this movie again, preparing for the podcast, I put down in my notes, would you sell out right away? And that's the key to this whole movie, man. Comfort over everything else, man. You consider that your cell phone contains uh, components that have been dug up through the trash from slave kids. You know what I'm saying? Nike sneakers made 35 cents a pair by slave kids. For for us to live comfortably, there has to be a quote unquote third world. Would you sell out? Most people, eh, why not? You saw Holly's apartment; it was pretty dope, man. Yeah. And when she does that MMA spin move to knock Nada out the window, she had a really nice uh, uh, container that was holding liquid, man. She that decan- she's living well. That decanter, uh, decanter knocked him a very decanter, that decanter exactly. knocked him a very long way. Exactly. She uses the decanter. She does a great spin move, bro. It's MMA esque. <laughs> so this but is the thing, man. I just love how it all builds to. We've we've talked about it already, but I just love that it just builds to this ending, man. It's just a oh, perfect yeah. ending. Boobs. Boobs. It's AIDS. It's gotta be boobs. <laughs> and, and the guy in the bar too. I just love the random dude at the bar. And then the, the people. <laughs> He's sitting there. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> And then the newscasters, all the crew are like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. The guy goes, Holly, you look like shit. And he runs away. <laughs> and then the movie ends. Oh, it's yeah, so it's, brilliant. It's over- J- cue John Carpenter score. Do, 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 do. I mean, that's just, it just builds to that, man. It just builds it to, oh, and uh, the, uh, I put that on my birthday list. I think my wife's getting for me the They Live soundtrack by Mondo. What they do, do they, they cool the two, the cool art on the uh, on the thing, but um, do it. yeah, man, I don't know. So, what are your final thoughts about this movie? Listen, in 2019, you watch this movie, you start to think that your bosses are not human. It's that <laughs> simple. This this movie holds up in a way that a lot of 80s movies do not. You know, yeah. you're not going to rewatch The Secret of My Success and feel like, yeah, this is going on right now. I'll put it to you like that, baby. This movie is deep. This movie is real, and I put it up there as Carpenter's best. Wow. Would you? Is that why you're always wearing sunglasses at work? Listen, you don't want to not see the aliens, man. Mr. Ahn, he was an alien. That guy yeah. wasn't cool. How come you never had headaches, though? That felt like a knife was in your skull. Because I was drunk all the time. You're, we were drinking those uh, coffees, Maxim coffees. Single. You thought it was coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I was just yelling at my kids and doing backflips during all this of is, it? This is why you're trying to entertain the kids, and I'm just sitting there, hey, you want to learn English? Okay, whatever. Read the book. This is what it is. The book has the answer. Teacher, what? Shut up. I tell my, stu- I tell a lot of my pe- uh, people I work with that all my classes were taped, and they <laughs> didn't believe me. I'm like, of course they were. Oh, yeah. I didn't oh, yeah. mind it because it covered us. If someone said something, watch the tape. That's right. CCTV. That is a phrase <laughs> learned in Asia. Hey, we were being watched while teaching. All times. That's right. Correct, also, man. All right. But uh, no, dude, I want to th- uh, say thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. God bless you, sir. And well played on your best life. <laughs> and you, you're, you're coming back for Jumper, right? You let me know, and I will be there. You awesome. are the Hoff. Uh, awesome, dude. Well, thanks for coming on. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer. For Norbert Morvan, this is Movies, Films, and Flicks. We'll see you next week.